What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space, and we're back in Space Engineers with a kind of collection of ideas today, and the theme with these was they are both all geared towards something that's less destructive than I've been doing previously, a bit like the airburst weaponry, we're looking at disabling and capturing stuff. But also, they're all ones that have been in some way inspired by comments from my channel, or suggestions on Steam, for example. So, starting off with a brief description of what we have here, and then I'll go into some demonstrations of how they work and how I've built them. So on the right hand end in front of us now is the boarding craft that was suggested. So one designed to deliver a payload of troops into a ship so that they could unload inside and take over that ship. Next up we have a, uh, I'm not sure what you could, limpet disabling craft of some sort. Uh, the idea or thinking behind this one is that this is designed to prevent a ship from being able to get away from you, potentially to allow further attacks to come in, be more effective, or potentially to allow some of the player-based weaponry that's a little bit harder to hit with to be able to hit the target because it's no longer moving so quickly. And then we have kind of three variants on the same sort of design. And these are designed to be, again, breaching craft, but designed to basically cut a big hole in the side of whatever ship they come up to. Uh, and the three variants are pretty straightforward. We have the one that I built first, which is of course relatively small, uh, where I was working out the concept. We have the one where I tried to scale it up, which as usual has a few problems when you try and scale it up. And then finally one where, as was suggested on the channel again, I'm using thrusters rather than grinders to do the cutting. So let's have a quick look at how these actually function and how these work. So beginning with the breaching ship and we have load us ourselves up into one of the easy start worlds just so that we've got a few targets to be making use of and let me jump into the ship and we can give it a test run. Yeah, so the idea of this one is, as I said, to breach inwards and try and allow you to offload troops inside whatever you're flying towards. So the inside of this has been geared up as a troop transport. We have chairs for our various soldiers or whatever they may be to stay stable as the craft is moving. I've also put a couple of other features on there, so we have a spherical gravity generator system at the front to try and prevent some sort of incoming fire if people are using projectile based or sort of gravity based weaponry against us, or even something like the ore shotgun. Uh, they are not on permanently, obviously they can be activated as and when. And then at the back here we just have a cargo container for storing any weaponry for the troops. And let's give this a little try. So just to begin with we're going to breach our way into the base in front of us. This is kind of geared towards a, a large ship or a base structure where you've got a large internal area. So this would work on the red ship there, it would work on the um, the main base we're heading towards here. Potentially wouldn't work quite so well on the blue ship for example because of course that's thin enough you'll probably go through it rather than into it. So the only sort of weakness with this craft is I haven't made it particularly quick because I don't really see any point in it being particularly quick. But it does have one thing on the front that I sort of found was producing some very interesting results. So there we go, we've arrived in, breached into the building we wanted to attack. And if we now go inside, you can see minimal damage, tiny bit of damage there on the inside corridor. But if we open this up, we are now able to access inside that base directly. So that's the sort of basic concept of that. But if I just go back, I can talk a little bit about what was on the front, because it's also on the front of some of my other ships, and it's been showing some interesting results. So, on the front of all but the, uh, again, I'm not sure what, what really to call this, the limpet disabling craft, something along those lines, but on the front of all but that one, I have stuck a couple of antennas, and these are not there to cause any damage. What they seem to be doing quite nicely for this sort of craft is acting as a cushion as you arrive into whatever ship you're colliding with, which slows you down to an appropriate sort of speed, but at the same time doesn't really cause any damage to the craft they're attached to. The antennas simply just break. And it means that you're not colliding with such force that you actually tear the ships apart. So moving on next, I'm going to demonstrate and I'll, I'll start off using the, the original design of the grinding ship and let's get a better view. Now these do actually have, if I get them out, cameras on the front of them so you can see a little bit better of course. Not that one, that one. 
not really useful when you're flying like this, uh, but becomes useful as you come in ready to actually do something with the ship. And this time we're going to go make a bit of a hole in the side of the big red ship here. So again, as with the other one, you would approach and the idea is you don't need to worry too much about your speed and damaging the front of the craft because of how those antennas are operating on the front. So if we come into this camera view, you should be able to see as we come in. What those antennas are going to do is break and break the craft a little bit as well, I'll admit. But in doing so, slow us completely down. And now we're in this position. If I jump out here, I can just activate the grinders and turn on the piston. And if you look at the end, I do actually have a sensor on this designed to um, do that for you because all of these ships are remote controlled. So they're aimed at being remote control crafted rather than piloted by me. It was just considerably easier to pilot them myself. And what this will do is tear its way into the side of the ship. And on this particular variant, there is only a single piston. So. Well, pretty straightforward really, centre of the craft has a piston going down the centre of it and I've just built the grinders on the end of that piston. As we arrive, we use the feet to lock on and then the grinders cut a nice hole into the centre of that ship and looking at where we attacked, I think what we did was cut in and take out well, at least one of the ship's two reactors. So that gives you an idea of how it worked on the smaller scale and it seems pretty effective, I think it's quite cool. Um, not sure how useful it would be in practical purposes. I mean, what you probably need to do now, having cut yourself a hole like that, is then detach and reverse the ship away so that anybody else following up could then board. So you'd sort of reverse that, turn your uh, grinders off, and then you could reverse away from the ship. And if I reverse away, you'll also be able to see what exactly the antennas did. But you see how little that, okay, we well, only even needed one of them. But that top one, that top panel is completely undamaged. Nothing has happened there because that antenna was present to slow the whole craft down. And I'm pretty certain that if you were to try this without those antennas on the front, you would end up destroying the landing feet. So that's that version of it. And as I said, it's pretty straightforward. Down the center sort of spine in there, if I just delete my way along, this is where all the gubbins are. So uh, we, as I said, it's remote controllable. There's a timer that's connected to the sensor on the front if I was to use that method of deploying this and then just reactors and some gyros and then in front of there is the piston. Uh, so a very, very simple design, but seems to be quite fun for attaching on potentially autonomously two ships and then grinding away inside. And if I go back over here, we can see this one here, which I won't actually sort of demonstrate it in working, but I will talk a little bit about the differences, is simply a slightly larger one in that I put two pistons on top of each other. So as you can see, there are two pistons there, but as you would imagine, those two pistons, by putting them on top of each other, become a lot less stable. So there's a lot more moving around. It's a lot less sort of comfortable inside there. As you can see, as if I just move, swing the ship around, you see how much that's bouncing, and that's purely because there are two pistons on top of each other. And if I actually extend this, and it extends, I'm not going to extend it, I forgot how slowly that extends, but it gets even worse once it comes the whole way out. Now, that hasn't prevented this from working. This will work just fine, and uh, hopefully there's a bit of a clip in the background of this cutting the whole way through the red ship. But you get the idea that sometimes scaling these things up doesn't work quite as well as you'd like. And then the final one of these three is using thrusters instead of grinders to kind of burn its way inside. So again, this is the two piston setup. So again, it has that kind of intrinsic issue with the front moving around and wobbling a lot, as you can see in there. Uh, that's, it's just unavoidable with using dual pistons, unfortunately. I haven't yet worked out another method of trying to get proper reach inside the craft. So we're gonna come down and approach this much like we did with the other one. There is one other main difference, and that is with this, you must have the landing gear set to manual. Uh, for some reason auto lock is not as strong as actually manually locking the landing gear. Uh, if you manually lock the landing gear they do become really really strong. So I'm going to come in kind of carefully to make sure I get a, a good landing gear lock. Obviously that's not ideal if you consider that you'd probably be trying to do this reasonably quick. But for the time being with this design this is what's necessary. And I'm just going to come in and again the antenna are going to hit first and then I'm going to try and line us up so that those landing gear are, as far as I can get, very well attached. So we're looking for four lights, preferably. And it doesn't seem to want to lock on there particularly well. This ship's quite angled, and that seems to cause this quite a lot of problems. Uh, let's see if we can... Oh, we're getting some lights. 
four lights. So there we go. As soon as you've got four lights lit up, you're going to have a really strong grip, and then you can lock the landing gear and start doing what you're supposed to. So let's turn the engines on, and you can already see the effect of this. And then I can hit the piston, which is going to move real slow, and start cutting its way in. Now, as I said, this has an issue that the other one doesn't, and you can see with this piece of glass here what I'm talking about. The grinders would have killed that. They would have destroyed it. The engines haven't. They only touch things in a purely straight line, and so this is going to jiggle a load as it bumps and scrapes its way inside. Now, so far, I've not had it break itself while doing so. It just continues to cut in, but it does seem really, really tight, and so I could potentially expect a problem to occur with this at some point as it tries to cut through and gets caught on some of these side edges there. You can see it kind of gets rid of them by crashing into them rather than getting rid of them by cutting through them. However, it is pretty effective and I reckon that I could speed that piston up and it would actually end up being faster than the grinding one if I can sort landing gear problems because that's always going to be a bit of an issue with this. You need to be really well connected. You can't just charge headlong at something and expect that to work. So we'll just wait two seconds while this cuts its way the whole way out the back. Why not? And it, as you can see, it does does have the slight side effect of moving whatever it's attached to, which leads me quite nicely onto what I'm going to do as the, the last bit, which is, as I said, it's kind of a limpet disabling ship. So there you go, that's now cut through, and as you can see, it's still having trouble with it. It's kind of bouncing around and getting stuck on stuff that it hasn't quite managed to cut. But effective enough, and it has gone the whole way through, hasn't damaged the ship that's attached, so could be called a success at the same time. Let me go back and talk finally about the limpet ship. And this one is a little bit more difficult to test, so I'm going to cut to some footage from a completely separate game where I've got someone helping me out to test this one. But first things first, let me show you a little bit about how it's made. And again, we've got a massive rank of landing gear on the front, and that's important for this. Again, notice they're on auto lock. Because there's so many of them, this one can get away with that when the other one can't. But still, that's that's one thing. And then I've tried to, as far as possible, fit as many thrusters in as small a space as, as I can. With less one slowing me down, because as you'll see, that bit's kind of the least relevant. And then, as with the other ships, down the centre here is hidden sort of all the gubbins needed to make it work. The only thing to sort of consider with this is there are, as you can probably start to see in there, a ton of reactors in here to make this function as it is. And again, as with the other ones, the only one, the only exception being the uh, boarding ship there, these are all designed to be remote controlled. So they've all got antennas on the back, somewhere nice and safe, so that you can remote control them. However, this one is designed to completely disable a ship. So the idea here is that you would be trying to slow down, capture, or just pin one of the enemy's capital ships, one of the enemy's largest ships that's giving you difficulties. And this ship would fly up, match speeds, or get very closely matched speeds with the target. And as you can see, we limp it onto the back. And by doing so, our inertial dampers immediately start to counter everything that ship is trying to do. With quite good results on this red ship here, you can see that actually it doesn't have that many engines. So once this gets on it with this many engines, you really mess with how well that ship can move around. And what that could potentially do is open up the option for you to target it with some of these other weaponry, for example. This comes in first, nice and fast, catches it, and then it doesn't matter that the boarding ship is very slow or this comes in fast, catches it, and then some of the other limpets attach on and start taking it to pieces. Or even, as a final option, it's a good way of potentially slowing down a craft that's trying to escape one of your player-made weapons. You know, we've seen that those can be quite hard to aim and they can be quite inaccurate. All the better then if your target is stationary. So I'm going to stick this in as a quick addendum because it's very, very strange behaviour when I went to try and record with my brother the bit where I do the limpet ship. Because as you can see here, I'm in control of my ship. I am in a completely different faction to my brother. The red ship is hostile. And yet if I come in and lock onto it and he is in the cockpit, I lose complete control of my craft for some reason. He's now controlling that craft. And the only thing connecting us is the landing gear. It's still just landing gear. But for some reason, it's behaving really odd. As soon as you lock it, 
someone else is using the ship. So if anyone's got an idea what the hell's going on there, please tell me, because at the moment, he is capable of controlling my ship using all my thrusters to move red around. So unfortunately, this doesn't actually work quite like I wanted it to. It will work great against NPCs, I'm sure. But against another player? Uh, yeah. It performs pretty weird. Does the job, if it wasn't for that very, very odd bug. Uh, so yeah, if anyone's got any ideas on that, get back to me. So there you go, guys. Three slightly different concepts, all geared towards that idea of disabling, and all thanks to you lot. I mean, not a single one of these has come purely from my brain. They've all got bits and bobs or entire idea come from comments and suggestions, and I, I really appreciate that. I'm really loving it, and I think I might try and make something more of that as well. So maybe we'll have a subscriber spotlight where I'm doing just your ideas once a week, perhaps. Either way, hope you have found this interesting, guys. As usual, I'm going to stick it up on the workshop so you can have a play around yourself, see how they work. And if you like the video, please hit that like button, please hit subscribe, really helps me out, and I will catch you next time.